Thanks very much, Jim. Thank you all. For, thanks for uh, sticking with the program, and uh, and thanks for the invitation to be here and, and to talk a little bit about how Ag Canada supports innovation to enhance the uh, the Canadian diet and to promote a healthy food environment in Canada. A lot of what um, was been said before, especially the last speaker, Harvey, really set the stage, and he's answered. He's probably uh, duplicated some of um, what I'm going to say, so it's made my my task much easier. These are my disclosures. I have no uh, conflict of interest. Um, what I'm going to do today is to talk about agriculture and agri-foods, uh, uh, Agri-Food Canada strategy um, for uh, um, agriculture and agri-food in Canada. I mentioned some of the drivers of the, these activities, some of the funding mechanisms. You've, we, you would have heard about um, the, um, the Canadian Agricultural Partnership. Uh, I will, I'll talk a little bit about the, um, some of the outputs that that have come out of uh, Ag Canada's uh, research program, and then a conclusion. So I think um, from all of the presentations and the conversations uh, earlier today, I think we can, we can agree that in order to, to, to improve the health of Canadians, we need to address issues related to production, processing, distribution, and consumption of food along the value chain, the food value chain. And we need to ensure a supply of safe and nutritious food is readily available for everyone. And, and this is really the purpose of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, to ensure there's, a, a safe, um, there's, a, there's food availability and there's food, and, and food is available, the available food is safe to eat. So Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada delivers in, um, the, the, the research program through a series of research centers, 20 centers located throughout Canada. They are divided into eco-zones, so you have here the Prairie, you have Ontario, Quebec, and then you have Coastal. You'll see here that there, each of the research centers, there are 20 of them, supported by 34 research farms, um, they conduct activities that are appropriate for the ecosystem, for the climate. So um, the crops and the, and the, 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 the um, forages that take place, the, and the um, the animal production are appropriate for the climate for that particular region. AFC delivers science through a matrix of nine sectoral strategies and four strategic objectives. So the science within Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada is separated into six commodity groups, three, six commodity sectors, and for each of these is applied a strategic objective. So increasing agriculture productivity, enhancing environmental performance. Someone was asking about the role, if whether we are taking into consideration the environment as we, as we grow more food. Um, another strategic objective is how do we improve attributes for food and non-food uses, and how do we address uh, threats to the value chain, so food safety. So these four strategic objectives are applied across the six commodity sector, and then we've got the three cross-cutting um, strategies. So biodiversity, ecosystem resilience, and clean technologies. So within the agriculture um, and agri-food um, research system, there is cognizance of the environmental impact. We are, or the scientists are engaged in activities, in the clean technology activities, to understand how we can reduce greenhouse gases, for example. How we can better perform, better, better um, achieve um, growth in the agriculture sector with minimum impact on the environment. And, and this, 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 this matrix is supported by investment, by human resources, by partnerships. As an example, so I, I mentioned that there are four strategic uh, objectives in the science program within Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. So it's summarized as PEAT. So product, we, we look to increase the productivity of, of the sector. We are concerned about the environment, the environmental impact. We are looking at ways to improve food with, with, with health attributes or desirable health or desirable attributes. And we're looking at 
threats to the food system and to ensure that we have food, um, safe food. So these strategic objectives, as I said before, are applied to the sector science strategies as listed here. And as an example, these are linked to the government of Canada's policies. And in this case, you know that there's an emergent food policy with four, four themes. And so here I've tried to, to outline how our science leads or supports Government of Canada's uh, um, um, policies. Within, within Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, there's a significant investment in science and research because science is the basis of a lot of, of the policies that, that are made in the government. So you'll see here that within the science and technology branch of AAFC, um, the, the operating budget in 2017-18 was just under $250 million, um, half of which went to salaries and operating. But, and, um, but 70, $72 million um, involved in research. You'll see that most of the research conducted by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada are upstream discovery high risk type research. So as we go, so the investment with, in, uh, with the investment in research at I Canada is focused on discovery science. And as we move the science into, into um, from discovery to development into, into production, we seek partnerships. So this is a, it's a sliding scale here. So the discovery research is done that's a major investment, but as we progress through the, the pipeline here, moving the science into, into products, we seek partnership, and at the end here, there's more industry engagement. You would have heard of the Canadian Agriculture Partnership, or CAP. This is a five-year, $3 billion investment by federal, provincial, and territorial governments to strengthen the agriculture and agri-food sector. The goal here is to accelerate the pace of innovation. And this program aims to support pre-commercialization pre activities, invests in cutting edge research to benefit the agri agriculture and agri-food sector. So it's a major investment. Of this, $160 million is being invested under the science clusters and some of you might have been involved in submitting um, program um, projects to the science cluster. They, they were 20 cluster application received. The announcements have not been made. Um, but for sure, it was oversubscribed. Uh, the requests for funding under the cluster program far exceeded the amount of funds available. But there's also another part of money. So the agri-science projects. And this, is, this specifically targets short-term product type, um, product development type uh, projects. This is meant, this funding, the agri-science projects, is meant to address specific industry challenges, and the area of focus are identified mutually by industry and government. And I should say that the agri-science uh, clusters, importantly, are meant, they are led by industry, they require investment by industry, and they are aimed at addressing problems within industry. So within AAFC, the, the science that we pursue is meant to support industry, to ensure that the agriculture sector in Canada is, is resilient and economically viable. Our activities for, for, fall under, can be summarized here, new knowledge, the generation of data on functional attributes of Canadian agriculture um, products and agri-foods, in the development of innovative products and the development of innovative technologies. So in each of these space, our scientists are creating new knowledge and creating innovative products, innovative technology, but then these are handed over to industry for um, adoption. Some of the things that we've achieved over the last decade or so 
Uh, some of the activities, um, so the activities fall under food attributes, food safety, and food processing. So I'll talk a little bit about food attributes. So our scientists have identified health-promoting attributes of foods and have worked with industry to help to advance health claims to promote value of Canadian foods. For example, um, our scientists worked um, with industry for the approval and, uh, and, was, and was successful in, in, a, in, in submitting a health claim for barley, beta-glucan consumption, and cholesterol lowering. There was an, um, we worked with industry as well um, to, to, to conduct some of the activities that were considered in the approval of a, hot, a soy health claim. We are working now with uh, the pulse industry, um, trying to, 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 to strengthen that dossier so that the industry might be able to, to, get, to have a strong case to get an approval of, um, of pulse consumption and blood glucose lowering effects. And I'll talk more, a, little bit, a little bit more about that. So we've also worked on improved methodologies for formulation and assessment of uh, novel foods with enhanced attributes. And this is somewhere, this is something that we need to do more of because we need to add value to Canadian commodities. We need to be, be able to, to take the commodities um, and, um, and package them in a way that we have more, um, more healthy, functional foods with value added available to the Canadian population. As well, we've, our scientists have conducted, um, have, have, have produced processing technologies for the production of fresh food and fresh ingredients with high nutrient quality. And this, I think, these activities have had significant impact. And Mary said in the, during the panel discussion, Mary said that we need to have work that's well done it's published in highly ranked peer reviewed journals in order for, 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 for policymakers to take that information up, to, 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 to make the necessary, um, to, to, to consider the, the science in order to make the necessary recommendations um, to promote healthy eating in Canada. And here's an example of impact. So, here, um, the, our work uh, conducted by Dita uh, Marvick and uh, Alison Duncan, featured in the Journal of Nutrition. So, you know, high impact journal, um, recognizing the work that we're doing. Heather Blewett, who is here as well, has done, has... So this work here shows that carbo... So when you replace half of the available carbohydrate in rice or potato, significant, leads to a significant reduction in blood glucose response. So it's a, a replacement effect. And this is really important in, 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 in managing people with diabetes. Similarly, Heather Blewett um, conducted a study in, at CCARM, and she showed that um, replacing half, 30%, six, sorry, 60% of the available carbohydrate um, in potato or rice by yellow peas or green peas, so commonly consumed Canadian peas, leads to a significant reduction in blood glucose response. And both uh, Dita and Alison um, and, and Heather are here, so you can talk to them, talk more, um, you can... Uh, um, get more information about these studies from them. So we concluded from these studies that replacement of half of the available carbohydrate in rice or potato with lentil or yellow peas significantly lowers blood gl glucose by about 23 to 38%. We've continued these studies with, very, with, 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 with um, um, looking at the formulation of foods made with lentil. So when we replace, uh, when we add 25 grams of available carbohydrate um, to a chili recipe instead of, uh, instead of rice, we see a significant reduction in blood glucose response here. And Dita, as I said, she's here. You can talk to her more about that. Um, Brittany, who's here also, she's looking at the dose response effect. So when, if you can, what's the blood glucose response to um, a half a cup or a quarter cup of commonly consumed um, lentil or commonly consumed starchy foods such as rice or potato or, or pasta or corn. And there are posters with these, so I won't go into the details. And then Sandra Clark, who is here also, has been looking at the satiety effects of, of pulses. So we're hoping that all this, this, kind of, this, this kind of data can be used by regulatory agencies to consider in, 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 in the derivation or in the planning of food-based dietary guidelines. 
Some of the other work that we've uh, conducted in food processing have led to the development or adap um, adaptation of new manufacturing processes. We have in St. Hyacin a state-of-the-art pilot plant where people, food, small, small manufacturing enterprise could come and formulate, get help to formulate, to package, to manufacture, package, ship their, their, their foods. So we encourage the, the adaptation of technology, adaptation of, of new processing methods and formulation um, throughout the value chain. So in Quebec, we've worked with the Quebec Maple, Maple Syrup um, Society to devise a, an optical device to check the quality of, uh, and purity of maple syrup. Our scientists are also looking at um, how, to, uh, how to reduce plate waste, how to reduce waste, processing waste. So they're identifying added value for underused food byproducts, for example, making bioplastics from starch, um, from potato starch. We are also looking at mitigating the effects of manufacturing processes and form formulation um, and bioavailability of value-added and novel food ingredients. For example, one of the scientists has just um, obtained this patent. So it's a process by which um, probiotics are encapsulated, protected using a fat matrix and then when, and during heating, the, the matrix turns, in, turns into a, a liquid, but the probiotics uh, remain intact. And this is being used to develop, to develop food for the um, poultry industry. We have a level two pilot plant in Guelph, one of the, one of, I think, two in Canada, where we can assess the, the effect of the effect of food processing on food safety. So we have a program that, uh, um, that is, um, addresses microbial threat, looking at the control of pathogenic bacteria, alternatives to the use of antibiotics. So for example, one of the, our scientists has shown um, pumice, um, cranberry pumice, um, has a significant um, antimicrobial effect. We're also looking at ways to reduce uh, things like mycotoxin and, um, and nitrosamine in foods, and developing processing technologies and validation of methods, for example, like UV methodology in the dairy industry to, in, to enhance pathogen control in meats and other foods. So here's the, here's the, the pilot plant um, um, in Guelph. Um, it allows for the control infection of, of meats, for example, um, and then uh, the application of, meth of, of processing methods um, to control pathogens. So, one of the scientists. So one of the things that we are concerned about is, is sodium, and so one of our scientists has shown that the, the um, high pressure processing is one of the ways that we can actually we can actually uh, replace sodium in in meats to control listeria listeria growth, and, uh, and, and has developed a, a processing technique that involves high pressure processing. Um, and, and with that, um, we, we, he was able to show that HPP is a viable technology that's available for indus to industry for improved microbial safety and microbial control of low sodium foods. So this kind of technology can be taken up by industry um, for upscaling. So I think very quickly what I've said is science is fundamental to AFC's food, nutrition, and health policies. And that AFC strategic objectives include fostering research innovations to enable the Canadian agri-food industry to be compliant, to be innovative, to be but also to be compliant with emerging guidelines for food safety. And collectively, we think that the, the activities that we pursue can promote and enhance food environment in Canada, and which can also drive value-added food export. But we can't do this alone. We have to do it with partnerships. So, and we think 
I think Harvey mentioned this before, with successful, with successful partnership, and really, none of us is as good as all of us. So we need to have successful partnership. This will stimulate creativity, leverage resources, reduce costs, you have access to highly qualified personnel, facilitate knowledge transfer, and bring together a multidisciplinary group and talents to address complex issues such as the food system and food availability and promoting healthy eating. Thank you. Dan, in, in this very nice presentation of the activity in agriculture, and there's a lot, and another part of my argument to harness that on the health side, but the innovation and processing is, where is the recognition of Canada as providing those value-added foods? I know we import a lot, and what's the strategy for improving that vision. I mean, do the Nestle's of the world from the research center in Bavay come here and say, this is our shopping ground for innovation on processing and crops? Uh, you know, part of that big picture, because there's a NAPRI thing on the Barton Report next week that I have to talk at, but uh, there's really a struggle to, to provide that value added, I think. Yeah. Yes, uh, thanks very much, Harvey, and, and, and thanks very much for um, preempting and for, put, for putting, for, for um, providing the baseline for my talk. Um, the challenge, so upskilling innovation is a serious, is a serious issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult problem that we're trying to, um, um, to, ha to tackle. Um, there is a lot of innovation. The, the problem is why aren't we taking that innovation and making a difference and, and so the Minister of Agriculture has, has the government of Canada has um, expressed a desire to increase um, food export from $50 billion to $75 billion by 2025. The only way that could be done is by value added and processed foods. And so we need to have a conversation about how, well to address your question, how can we get the partnership required, the investments required the interest to move the innovation into action. I think the food, the food sector in Canada ha, um, comprises a lot of small manufacturing sectors, small manufacturing enterprise. And so they're not really, you don't have the big Nestle and the big um, Blondell and you know, um, these big companies wanting to invest in Canada to upscale these innovations because the population isn't as big as Canada or India or China. So we need to, f we need to figure out a way to do it ourselves to, to, because we need to move away from becoming a commodity export country to one that exports value-added foods. 